Okay, hello fourth grade. Today is day 17 of our video lesson. And as you can tell, we are doing something a little bit different. Um, so first of all, I hope you can all see this right now. This is um, the whiteboard that we're gonna be using for our math. Um, but before we get to our math, um, a couple of reminders. As you can see right here, we have a couple of important stuff that we need to get through. Um, first of all, reminder is that we have a Zoom meeting today at 2 p.m right, regular time. So if you have any questions about math or anything like that, um, you can go ahead and um, join and you can ask it. Uh, next up, we're not gonna have a Zoom meeting on Thursday, this Thursday, because it is, your, it is the beginning of your spring break, okay? Next up, um, school will resume. I will begin uploading the videos again on the 21st of April, okay? Um, so again, no, we're not coming back physically to school, um, unfortunately, on the 21st. Um, so we're gonna keep learning through how we've been doing it for the past three weeks, okay? Um, next up, so tomorrow we're gonna have a Zoom with the whole school starting at 9 a.m. Um, Mrs. Reynoso and Mr. Hernandez are gonna lead us through prayer in uh, for Stations of the Cross. Um, and that's, again, it's going to be with the, whole, with the whole school and it's going to be through Zoom. So much like you all join um, my Zoom meetings, um, it's going to be the same thing. Um, more information is going to come out today. Um, and I will let you all know as soon as I get that information, like the link, um, I'll share it for sure. Um, and then at 9 a.m. tomorrow, you can, you can join. And I think it'll be fun. You know, it'll be nice to have everybody there in the Zoom meeting. Um, hopefully you know, uh, the whole school can join in and um, we can all pray together the Stations of the Cross, okay? And parents, you can join two families, um, students, anybody. All right. Um, yeah, because we're going to have the Stations of the Cross prayer service tomorrow, there will not be, uh, I will not upload a YouTube video for tomorrow. Instead, we're going to be doing Stations of the Cross, okay? So today is our last YouTube video. Um, until we come back from spring break, okay? So tomorrow on Wednesday, do not expect a new YouTube video from me, okay? Because we're gonna be doing Stations of the Cross instead. Um, and then spring break work. So I have decided that I'm not gonna give you any extra work. Instead, we're just gonna finish up whatever, you're, um, whatever we need to do. So again, um, let's go over this first one here. So you're gonna complete week 10 and um, week 11 worksheets for your social studies. And you will also complete the test. So let me just show you what um, which ones I mean by that. So hopefully you can all see that. I think I think you should. Um, but this is studies weekly. But this is um, my view, the teacher's view. And if we go down to social studies, you're going to complete week ten and week eleven. Okay, so week ten. Um, we went over, I think all you need to do is just one more worksheet, um, which is a think and review question, if I believe. Um, so you're gonna complete the worksheet and then you're gonna take the test. Um, and now, actually, I'll just go ahead and activate this one already. Right, and notice that, um, again, you have all of them. So this is week 10, the one that we've been working on, but you will also um, complete the worksheets for week 11. So let me actually just show you what worksheets I'm talking about. So this is how week 11 should look like. The mission system, it's called the mission system, this one, all right? And in your um, packet, you're gonna have you're gonna see it says week 11, okay? So any worksheets that you have for social study that say week 11, you're gonna go ahead and finish that up, okay? And again, it's very, I think it's very simple instructions to read them and um, you should be able to finish it, okay? It's not a lot, it's only three worksheets. Should not take you more than an hour, or less even. Um, but yeah, anything, any, Social studies worksheet that you see says week 10 or week 11. Go ahead and finish that up. Okay, so again, nothing new, no new work. Um, 
And I, I don't think it should take you too long, all right? I think it should be done within a good amount of time. But this is how it looks like. Again, hopefully you're all able to see this. Um, this is week 11, the mission system for social studies. And then you will also complete one of your science tests, which is a test that we've been, I mean, the unit that we've been working on for this week. So let me just show you. Again, you go here. And it's this one, Earth, Earth is animals. So for this one, okay, all you're gonna do, all you're going to do is just um, take the test for this, okay? You're not gonna, um, you're not gonna do anything else. You're just gonna go ahead and finish this um, test, okay? Um, don't move on to the next unit. You can if you want to, but our next one, our next unit is gonna be endangered species. Um, don't move on to that one just yet, okay? You can start reading it if you want to, but I'm not gonna activate the test for it because I wanna explain um, some of the topics first, okay? So again, as a review, for science, all you're gonna need to do is just complete the test for Earth's animals. And again, it should look like um, this right here, okay? Now, um, I'm just gonna review again, just to make sure that you're clear. So for spring break, all you're gonna do, all you're gonna be expected is to complete this test for science. And then for social studies, you're gonna complete the test for um, week 10 and week 11, and I'll just show it to you again. So we go to social studies. So these two, okay, Early Explorers Visit California, that's the one that we've been working on this week. And the next one is gonna be the mission system, all right? So both of these, um, go ahead and complete the worksheets for it, and also you will complete the test, okay? I'm gonna activate the test, and you'll be able to take it. Uh, I'll, activate, I'll activate them right now, okay? So again, what I recommend you do is you could just pause the video and then just write this whole thing down right here. Um, so you know what you need to do, okay? Um, so that's all your spring break work. It's not a lot. Um, you should be able to complete it uh, pretty quickly, all right? Um, instead of having a regular exit ticket for today, um, you're gonna have a religion test, a religion test on the Stations of the Cross. So in today's YouTube video description, um, instead of having an exit ticket, you're going to have a religion test on Station of the Cross, okay? And that's one of the reasons why we're actually doing this video like this um, through Zoom or, you know, through this platform, um, because I actually want to go through a presentation for you um, on what Station of the Cross is and what does it mean. So you have a little bit of an, of an idea about Station of the Cross before um, we do it as a whole school tomorrow, okay? So our schedule for today is we're gonna do our math. These, these our math lesson today, um, you don't have the worksheets for it. Instead, what I wanna do is I just wanna go over how we're gonna shade in fractions, okay? And again, you don't have any worksheets, so all you're gonna need to do is just uh, follow along and copy what I'm doing and listen, all right? Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about science, um, just to give you all a little bit more of information before you take your test. And then you already know what you need to do for your social studies. And then we'll move on to our Stations of the Cross um, presentation, presentation, okay? Okay, so let's get started with math. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is your warm up. You could go ahead and pause the video if you want to and um, solve it. And I'm just gonna erase this part. Okay, so pretty straightforward, pretty simple um, warm up, right? Numerator. What is a numerator? So a numerator, a numerator is just the number on top of a fraction. So let's say that we have um, four. 
4 over 10. Now your numerator is going to be 4. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's supposed to be an arrow. Kind of hard because I don't have a tablet. I have, I'm trying to draw with my mouse. So it's going to be a bit difficult for me, everybody, but just bear with me. It'll be fine. And that's it. So your numerator is the number on top of your fraction. Can you guess what your denominator is going to be? Well, using that same fraction, your denominator is the number 10, this one, that one. This is your denominator, OK? And we're going to be working a little bit more. Again, that's our objective for today. We're going to just learn how to shade, um, how to use fractions to help us shade in different shapes, OK? Um, let me just erase all of this really quick, and then we could get started. OK. So let's actually use the same fraction. Let's say that I have 4 over 10. I have 4 over 10. Well, like I talked um, a little bit about it yesterday, is let's say that we have a box, right? The total amount of pieces in this box, this is, uh, this is also called a tape diagram, by the way. Um, if we have this box or tape diagram, how many total pieces are we going to have? We're going to have 10 total pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I know everybody. I'm sorry. I know that it's a lot faster with the whiteboard with the regular whiteboard markers, but not today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And not just you raise this. No, not the whole part. I'm sorry, everybody. There you go. Ugh. It's gonna be a headache, but it's okay. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, a little bit better, but okay. So this is our ten um, box. This is a box with ten sh with ten total pieces. Our numerator tells us how many. It tells us how many of them are going to be shaded in. So in this case, we're going to have four shaded in. One, two, three, four. So using a tape diagram, this is how four over 10 would look like. I have one, two, three, four. But in total, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pieces. So this is how four out of 10 looks like. Now, let's do another example. So let's erase this one for 10. Let's say that I have, let's do a simple one. Let's say that I have one over two. Well, then that means I'm gonna have to draw a box and how many pieces is this box gonna have? Exactly two. And how many of them are gonna be shaded in? Our numerator tells us that this is our numerator. One, so that means only one is going to be shaded in. Right, so pretty simple, right? Probably something that you might have learned in third grade. Let's do one final example. Let's say that we have um, two over four. I'm going to make my tape. Uh, Kind of ugly, but oh well. We have four total pieces, right? That's what our denominator tells us. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Our numerator tells us how many, how many pieces are going to be shaded in. So in this case, our numerator is two. So we shade in one, two. And that's how it looks like. Good? All right. But now, what if we have something like 
What if we have something like this? Five over four. What if we have something like that? Five over four. How's that gonna look like? Well, let's use the same steps. I have a tape diagram. How many total pieces do I have? Four, one, two, three, four. Okay. How many of them need to be shaded in? Five. That's what our numerator tells us. So I have one, two, three, four. Whoa, 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 whoa. I need to shade in five, but I can only fit in four. So what am I going to have to do? Well, I'm going to have to grab another box of four, right? I'm going to have to grab another box of four, draw another box of four. One, two, three, four. Now I shaded in the four up here. So that means I only have to shade in how many? Just one. And now look, I have one shaded in, two shaded in, three shaded in, four shaded in, and the fifth, my fifth one. But now, hmm, another way that I can rewrite this five over four, another way I can rewrite this as is, well, I have five over five right here. I mean, four over four right here. And think of it like this, everybody. This is one Kit Kat bar, just one, not the whole piece. Another Kit Kat bar right here, another Kit Kat bar right here, and another Kit Kat bar. So now you have one whole Kit Kat bar, right? You have one whole Kit Kat bar. But you also have one piece, one fraction of the Kit Kat bar. You have another one. You have one, right? You have one over four. So you don't have a full Kit Kat bar right here, but you do have one over four. Okay, so five over four, that is the same thing as saying one whole and one over four, okay? These two fractions have names and don't worry about it, but we're gonna talk about it later. But for now, I'll just tell you that this is called an improper fraction, this one, and this is called a mixed number. And again, don't worry about that. That's just extra information. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, a little later. And we'll definitely talk about that in uh, fifth when you get to fifth grade, okay? But let's do another example. Let me just erase this. Actually, I'll just clear everything. Okay. Let's do, hmm, let's do four over two. I have four over two. Now, again, we have to do the same thing. I have a tape diagram. I have how many total pieces? Two. And how, how many of them need to be shaded in? four. So I have one, two. Hmm. I need to shade in two more. So I need to make another box of two. And again, it has to be identical as this one. I have two pieces. And then how many of them are going to be shaded in? I have one, two, three, and four. All right. So, hmm. I'm noticing that right here, I have one hole. Right here, I have one hole. So one hole and one hole, that's gonna give me two holes, right? Let's say that you had, uh, I don't know, a Kit Kat bar that only had two pieces. You have one hole, one fraction, another fraction, that's one hole. And then you have another piece and another piece, that's another one hole, and so now you have two. So four over two, that is the same thing as saying just two holes, all right? Let's do another example. Let's say that I had, 
and this will be our last one, eight over three. So what you can do now is you can go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this one, okay? Using the same technique we did before. Okay, so hopefully you're able to solve it. If not, that's okay. We have, we have a tape diagram that's gonna have how many pieces? Three, that's what our denominator says. One, two, three. How many of them are gonna be shaded in? Eight. So I have one, two, three. But again, we need to fill in eight and we only have three here. So let's make another, let's grab another um, box of three. So I have one, two, three. So I have one, two, three. I still need to shade in five more. It goes four, five, six. Hmm, oh man. So I guess I have to make another box of three. I have one, two, three. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I'm done. So let's see what we have now. Do it in black. I have one hole right here. I have a second hole, one hole, one hole. And then here I have, actually, let me erase this too. And I'll put one because it just ha I just have one. I have one here, one here, and then here I have two holes over three. So if I add them all up, I have one hole plus one hole, that's two, and then I have this guy. Two holes and two thirds. So eight over three, that is the same thing as saying two holes and two over three, okay? So now let's do it the opposite way. What if we had, what if we had, um, oh, not any reason. What if you were given the drawing? Ooh, not a good drawing. And let's say that it had one, two, three. Okay, let's say you had something like this. What type of fraction would this be? So you have this guy over here, and then you have this guy over here. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out the fraction for this drawing. All right, well, hopefully you were all able to figure it out. Here I have four total pieces, right? One, two, three, four. And my numerator tells me how many of them are shaded in. So I have one, two, three, four. Or because all of them are filled up, or I can rewrite this as one whole, right? One whole, full piece. And then here I have four total pieces and I have three of them shaded in. So that I have my answer to this whole problem is one whole and three fourths, okay? And that's it. That was really our, what we needed to work on for today. I didn't really want to move on with our math until we um, got a little bit more practice with um, drawing and shading in fractions, okay? So hopefully today's math lesson made um, yesterday's lesson a little bit um, clearer. Um, hopefully today's lesson was pretty simple, but for math, this is all we're gonna do, okay? Again, you don't have any of these worksheets. All you had to do for today just follow along and be sure you're copying down the notes, okay? So now what I want to show you Okay. 
Now let's actually go over um, a little bit more for our science, right? So we have Earth as animals. And I actually want to explain briefly, really quickly, um, what this unit was about before you move on to take your test, all right? So let's move on to this one. So the main idea of this week's science unit was really to let us know that animals are just very different, right? Some of them have, as you can see here, backbones and fur, um, and some of them have babies um, through eggs or through other means. This paragraph right here tell you that mammals come in all shapes and sizes, for example, right? But they've got all something very important in common. On the inside, mammals have a heart with four chambers. They also have backbones and neck bones. Now, this is important because guess what? We're mammals, okay? We have a heart, we have backbones, right? Our spine and neck bones. Giraffes, for example, like they show here, they have a heart, they have a backbone. Uh, this ostrich, they have a back, they have a backbone. Now, another thing on the outside that you maybe not have thought about is that on the outside, mammals have hair. They have hair. Um, and even though you can see it, for example, it doesn't look like I have hair, but if you look very, very closely, you can tell that I do have hair. Okay. Same thing with you. It might look like you don't have hair, but actually we, we do. And a pretty interesting fact is um, I read somewhere and I'll just throw this out there that we actually have the same amount of hair as um, monkeys. It's just that for monkeys, their hair is very long, but we have the same amount of hair because we have hair, um, small, small hairs everywhere. I have hairs on my cheek. And again, they're very, very tiny, but if they were, to, if they were able to grow very, very large or long, we would look like monkeys, okay? Um, so this, these two paragraphs right here, um, just talk about mammals. We're mammals, all right? Next up, it talks about reptiles. Now, reptiles are pretty different, um, and they're kind of cool, I think. But the main thing that you should know about um, reptiles, for example, like snake, snakes are cold-blooded, okay? Meaning us, or for example, us humans, we're warm-blooded, okay? We have an internal temperature that keeps us warm, right? Our blood is warm. Um, for, let's talk about um, these reptiles first, because I feel like I'm just going on in circles. What, what the word cold-blooded means is that these animals like um, snakes and lizards, um, they, can't, they can't keep warm. In order for them to keep warm, they have to literally go out into the sun and stay in the sun for their blood to be warm and then they'll be warm but for us for humans for mammals we're a little bit different right because even if it's for example if it's cold inside your house you're still going to be a little bit warm okay but if you're a reptile like a snake or a lizard and it's cold you can get you could possibly die. These animals can die if they don't get enough sun. So every day, snakes and lizards, they need, they need to go outside into the sun and just stay there, just lay there for maybe a few hours, and then they'll start to get really, really warm, and then they'll go back inside. And once they start to get cold again, then they have to go back outside and get warm. Us, we're different. Um, for example, right now is a perfect um, experiment because we're in quarantine, right? You're not really supposed to go out into the streets. Um, and some of us maybe, maybe you have experienced this as well, um, you probably haven't even seen or gone out into the sun, right? Maybe you spent your entire day inside of your home, never stepping foot on the outside. Um, but if you're a reptile, that's very, very dangerous because you need the sun. You need the sun to get warm. Um, 
And that's what it means to be cold-blooded, right? That's the main difference between a, a mammal, a warm-blooded um, people like, like us, and a cold-blooded animal like a snake or a lizard, okay? Next up, it talks about birds. Birds are very, very cool, I think, because their bones are hollow, meaning that, let's say, this is a good example. I have a pen. What it means to be hollow is that this is pretty much an example of a bird's bone. This, this green stuff is a bone, and inside, there's nothing in there. And why is that important? Because this allows them to fly, okay? Because if their bones are hollow, they don't weigh a lot, so they get to fly pretty easily. But for us, our bones are not hollow. They have stuff inside it. And again, let's use this pen as an example. They have stuff inside it. Our bones, let's pretend that our bones is this green part. We have stuff inside. And this stuff inside is very, very heavy. So it's very hard for us to, to fly and float. But whereas a bird, there's nothing really, there's nothing in there. It's hollow. So then that means that their bones don't weigh much. It's ver they're very, very light. So when they flap their wings, they get to go, well, they get to fly, okay? And then last one, it talks about um, gills and fins. So as you know, um, fish, they need gills. And gills is actually a very, this is the word that I'm talking about, gills right here. Fish have gills, that's what allows them to, excuse me, that's what allows them to, um, breathe underwater. Um, and they're actually very, very complicated. I'm not gonna get too specific as to how gills work, but pretty much all they do is that they kind of take out all the water that the fish is um, swallowing. And the only thing that's left is just the oxygen. And again, I'm not gonna go, you're not expected to know, you know how exactly they work. That's something that um, you'll learn a little bit more about in middle school. And again, very interesting. The point is that gills help fish breathe underwater. That's the main important thing that you should know, okay? And with that information, I think you should have enough um, to uh, take your test. Again, feel free to take to use your notes during the test, right? I have no problem with that. Use them. Um, again, one thing I recommend is having, you know, the test on one part of your screen and then on the other tab, have the newspaper out, okay? Um, but again, feel free to use your notes, no problem. All right, now let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and talk about stations of the cross for a bit. So there are 14 different stations, okay? And the whole point of stations of the cross is that it gives us a glimpse as to what Jesus felt and how Jesus, um, was in his last few days before he was nailed to the cross. Um, and again, a very powerful, um, just a very powerful tradition, all right? As Catholics, we're supposed to um, pray these stations of the cross because again, it gives us an, an idea of just what Jesus was feeling on his last day um, before he was nailed to the cross, all right? It's like a, it's like a story. Um, well, it is a story. Um, and before people begin Station of the Cross, there's actually a prayer. And again, tomorrow you'll, you'll learn a little bit more about that, or you'll we'll say the prayer. But for each station, there's a prayer, and I have it right here. Usually there is a leader, and they say at the beginning of each prayer, they say, I mean, of each station, and they say, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. And then everybody else says, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Now, sometimes it's a little bit different. Sometimes it might say, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you instead of we praise you. But it's a little bit of the same thing, okay? And then everybody else would say, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. And 
we are going to, I'm just gonna show you each station. I'm not really gonna talk about it because there's a good video, this video right here, and I'm gonna put it in the description video, in the description for today's YouTube video. And you can click on it and it goes through it pretty well. I think it does a good job of explaining each station. All right, but let's just go through them uh, quick. So the first station is Jesus is condemned. All right, there is this Roman, um, kind of like a Roman boss named Pontius Pilate. Um, and Pontius Pilate was the Roman emperor who condemned Jesus. He's the one that said, okay, Jesus um, needs to die. And it's really, Mostly the people, Pontius Pilate kind of asked the people, you know, what should we do with Jesus? And it's the people that told that were saying, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate, he he said, okay, then that's what's gonna happen. And again, remember that at the beginning of every station, there's a prayer that goes along with it. And it's this one. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. All right, but because right now we're just kind of going through it quickly, tomorrow when we actually pray the Stations of the Cross as a whole school, um, Mr. Reynoso and Mr. Hernandez will lead us in those prayers, okay? The second station is when Jesus receives a cross. Now, this cross is heavy. This cross actually um, symbolizes all of human sins, all right? Um, and this is why Jesus loves us, because he took upon that cross and he said, it doesn't matter how heavy it is. It doesn't matter how painful it's going to be. I'm going to carry this cross and it's going to symbolize the, the sins of us humans. And then the next station, station three, is Jesus falls for the first time. Jesus falls a total of three times um, in the stations of the cross. And this is the first time, okay? The fourth station is when Jesus meets his mother. So again, this cross is very, very heavy that he's um, carrying and there's people calling him names and people um, just being mean to him. Um, so you can imagine how Jesus might've felt when he saw his mother, you know, his mother was kind to him. It's, it's um, kind of just gave him a little bit of hope knowing that there's someone by his side. Um, and yeah. Fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. So Simon was just a normal person and he was in the crowd, right? Because it's a whole um, crowd of people um, that's watching Jesus walk um, up to the hill where he's going to get nailed to the cross. And the soldiers that were escorting Jesus, they saw that he was just taking a long time. It was really, really slow. So the soldier said that they just picked out um, a random person from the crowd that was watching. He wasn't really making fun of them. He was just kind of there watching. And they said, you, Simon of Serene, help him carry the cross. And that's what he did. Simon helped Jesus carry the cross. Station six, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. In this station, Veronica is like another, um, you know, another woman watching Jesus as he's carrying his cross. And she's noticing that he just looks very, he's in pain. And so what does she do? She, she just needs to wipe his face because she sees that, um, you know, his face is very, very just dirty and it has blood because he has the crown of thorns there. And she said, no, I need to do something. I need to help him in any way I can. And so she decides to walk the face of Jesus. And the image of Jesus' face stays on the cloth where she wiped her, her where she wiped his face on it. Station seven is when Jesus falls um, the second time. Again, reminder that this cross is very, very heavy. Station eight is when Jesus meets the woman of um, Jerusalem. And, you know, these women, they're very sad. 
right? They're sad that you know Jesus is gonna it's condemned to death. He's in a lot of pain, but Jesus says, "No, don't worry about me. Pray for yourselves." Okay, and again, this is just another um, instance, another example of how much Jesus loved us. Because even though he's carrying this big, heavy cross, and you know he has a crown of thorns, he's in pain, he still says, "Don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. Pray for yourselves." Okay. Station nine is when Jesus falls a uh, third time. Station 10 is when Jesus is stripped of his clothing. And again, Jesus is, doesn't really um, care that, you know, they're taking off his, it's called the tunic, his robe. Um, and that kind of, it's a reminder of all the material stuff that we have in our life. Um, we don't need, you know, the new pair of shoes or the new pair of gaming. We don't need a new PS4 or a new computer or anything like that. Jesus is saying that really all you need is for your soul to be pure and for you to follow in God's um, teachings and Jesus' teachings. Station 11 is when Jesus is nailed to the cross. And again, a pain, very, very painful for him. Station 12 is when Jesus dies. Station 13 is when Jesus is taken down from the cross. And then the final station, station 14, is when Jesus is finally laid in the tomb. And as you can guess, he's resurrected in the third day. But the stations don't, um, don't show that. So again, we just went through it really quick. What I want you all to do is watch this video right here. I'm going to put the link. I'm going to copy the link. And I'm going to paste it in the description. Um, so instead of you doing a, a math exit ticket, you're going to watch the video. Um, and then you're going to answer the um, Google form. OK, this is how it looks. I'm sorry, this is how it looks. Fourth grade station of the cross quiz. 10 questions. Um, and if you watch the video, you'll be able to answer these questions, okay? But other than that, everybody, um, that's it. Um, again, please be sure to complete the quiz. Um, complete any your spring break work. Um, watch the, the video. I think it has some pretty good information. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, go ahead and message me again. Um, tomorrow we're going to have our, our Zoom Station of the Cross meeting. Um, prayer service at 9 o'clock. So you're not going to be getting a new YouTube video. It's just going to be a Station of the Cross um, prayer service day. Okay. And then on Thursday, you're on break. Have fun. Relax. Um, but again, stay healthy. Stay safe. And um, I will see you all. Um, in next week. All right. So with that, that is it. Have a great, have a great day.